I'm not challenging your opinion, but let me tell you the truth. Things like drinking and smoking and all of these vices where you dump all kinds of junk into your body, you are killing yourself. You are killing yourself very fast, not even slowly. Apostle, it does not matter. It's your life. But in taking decisions, it is wicked and selfish to not think about your children and not think about those connected to you as you take decisions. Are we together now? Yes. There are many people today who through their carelessness, they have left liabilities for society simply because they were not thoughtful enough. Any major decision you are about to take in life, especially your health, I want you to think about all those who are connected to you. What will happen now if I die? Some of you, for instance, you came from non-Christian families and you are the only Christian who is holding the banner of the gospel while waiting for the younger ones to grow. If you are careless with your life and you pass on now, what becomes of them? When you are thoughtful, you will not be careless with your life and your body. What happens to you now if you pass on leaving three or four children who are barely in primary school? It's, it was not an attack that killed you. Just carelessness with your health. Let me tell you this. My deliverance over this issue of health came. I've shared it with you. At the end of the year, when I'm doing my personal retreat, I gauge my progress against many indices. My spiritual growth, mental transformation, health and wellness, relationships, finances, purpose, and all of that. And for three years consecutively, I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health. For very justifiable reasons, I could travel for a meeting, return back in the night, return back. I had to make up my mind to say, Mr. Man, if you die and you kill yourself, let it be known to you that you killed yourself. Because I know that God loves me sincerely. He has invested his love and his jealousy upon my life. And I made up my mind. I said no more. Even if it is one step at a time, I will begin to correct it. This is a prophetic word for someone right now. And for somebody, the truth is you have the means. God has helped you. It's time to be serious. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. You are in a house where there's smoke, carbon monoxide all the time, and you are just inhaling this with your children. You have the money to move to a better place. Please get out of that place for the sake of the safety of your children. You are in a room. There is a jerry can of kerosene. There is a jerry can of petrol next to your bed. Your nose is directly touching the petrol while you are sleeping, and you have 5 million naira, 10 million naira in your account. When you die, what is going to happen to the money? We need to learn to be wise. I've told you you, the purpose of resources is for efficiency and time redemption don't pile millions and billions in your account and be cutting short your days because of selfishness greed you have a car of 20 30 million lying down in your house and you cannot put hundred thousand naira to invest in your health it is not wise I'm sorry if I'm harsh we're wrapping up but I need to say this I rather have a car of one million naira packed and have a body of one billion naira health wise. It was a wise bargain. You can't be having cars and houses, estates and mansions, and then to invest in your health is a problem. There are many people who cannot spend 20,000 naira. They can go to a restaurant, a priority restaurant, and spend 500,000 in a moment, just proving a point, but for their health. It is often said that health is wealth. A dying man has the desire to get his health back, not his businesses back, not the estates back. One of the greatest contributions you can make in a life, let me tell you, is helping them to know God and love God and helping them to live healthy. As much as possible when you are buying birthday gifts for people, try it concentrate on their health don't buy things you know they will not use hallelujah you see someone whose leg is tiny like this you buy you go and waste your money and buy a shoe of over 1 million size 45 that person is not even going to use it
are we together you can get health products you can invest fruits veggies you can even buy a book about living in health and give the person you have invested in that person's life i made up my mind that in the name of jesus i will be healthy it's a it's a determination i will be healthy i will be healthy because there is a lot to do for the kingdom and i know how i stretch myself by reason of the work that i do most people see me and say apostle do you rest i may not rest every day but i've been able to squeeze out a system and at least it's working hallelujah so when you try to call maybe in the middle of the night and you say apostle you told us you, you'll be there for us remember i am resting remember i am resting because believers have a way of blackmailing you spiritually. They just come up with all kinds of emotions and say, remember you said, I said I will be there for you. Jesus, who said he will be there for you? Why didn't you quarrel him? <laughs> he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'll be there for you as much as possible. But when I'm resting, it's as simple and honest as that. Gone are the days where people shout and say you are this and start sending you scriptures and say, listen, the Bible says a shepherd that cannot... Just delete it and rest, please. Allow people to... You, know, you, should, you should be secured enough to not be bullied by all those childish things. You see, when you walk yourself and stretch yourself and don't rest and you die, let me tell you what people will say. Hey, yeah. And that's the end of it. I made this mistake when we started newly. I would walk myself and not rest. My deliverance came when I went to a Catholic cathedral. I saw a crucifix and it occurred to me that I didn't die for any man. Now, I love people, don't get me wrong, but it was not my face that was on that crucifix. So I will be there for everybody as much as I can. There are pastors and leaders who have thrown their families in disarray thrown their health in disarray, thrown their finances in disarray, all in a bit to serve people who will largely not be grateful. Love people, but don't be a fool. In the name of Jesus. So seven keys I have given you. 